but he has nothing to do with the selection of the officers who run this Senate. And uh, if he starts fooling around with me, he ain't seen nothing yet. Barron was Senate president during the 1975 and 1976 sessions. One of his most ruthless displays of power came during the 1975 session. The Senate refused to confirm the governor's appointment of O.J. Keller as head of the Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services. The result was all-out war between Barron and Governor Reuben Askew. Before the dust settled, Barron's friend, Lou Brantley of Jacksonville, had overthrown Askew's ally, Senator Bob Saunders of Gainesville, as the next Senate president. I have not been involved in the lobbying of this president's race, but the governor of Florida last night, through his various lieutenants, way past midnight, was calling, threatening, threatening to take people's jobs, making terrible threats against the membership of this Senate, threatening to take one senator's son's job if they didn't go one way or the other in this Senate race. I take the strongest kind of exception to that. This is the Senate of Florida, and I'm proud of it. And I say, let the word go forth from this day forward in the, in the words of Jack Kennedy that the governor of Florida will not run the Florida Senate. And I urge him to stay the hell out of our business up here. I think this is the Senate of the state of Florida, not the Senate of the 10 soldiers of the governor. I'm not certain the governor knows anything about it. I am. Well, <laughs> well if he does, I agree with the president. He ought to get his nose out of the Senate's business. Uh, in regard to the remarks of yesterday, which I thought were inappropriate, intemperate, and uh, frankly, uh, disappointing. But I don't intend to let anyone, including Mr. Barron, intimidate me from doing anything that I think I must do for the people of Florida. That's why I was elected. When you get to the point in the, in the legislature, you know, to where you have absolute control over a whole legislative body, and if ever there was an area that cried out for reform, you know, in the effort of the legislative branch to diffuse the executive authority, isn't it time now that the legislature reform itself and start having a committee on committees so one person cannot call somebody up and say, okay, if you don't vote for me like I want you to do, you're going to lose your committee chairmanships. You're going to lose your legislation. And what that does, in effect, is that disenfranchises all the voters in that person's area. Hey, well, that's now, when you talk about arm twisting, <coughs> I've never seen more blatant arm twisting on behalf of anyone in my 17 years of government. Than I saw a the feuding between Askew and Barron continued during Barron's second session as president in 1976. Barron described himself from the podium in this way during the 76th session. Sometimes I'm tough, sometimes I'm uncompromising, oftentimes I'm unreasonable, hard-headed, relentless and downright mean. In those days, senators such as Bob Graham of Miami were known as doghouse Democrats, rarely able to get their bills to the floor. Harry Johnston was another of those doghouse Democrats. Barron made sure he was enshrined in legislative history as a tough guy by having his official portrait depict him sitting on his horse. He made jokes about his power. Time had passed and we'd all died. You know, Reuben had died, I'd died. Don Tucker had died, Dick Clark had died. Everybody was down there going to heaven. Had me dying first, which I didn't like. But <clears throat> got down to heaven, they saw somebody had everybody gathered up there in a crowd. And the guy that was doing the talking had a coat on, said DB. And Reuben said, who is that fellow? He said, well, it's really God but he thinks he's Dempsey Barron. <laughs> By the 1977 session, Barron was no longer president, but Brantley was, and Barron's power was undiminished. Witness this exchange when a bill by former Miami representative Barry Cuton came up. And uh, it simply tries to clear up the statutes relative to the jurisdiction of courts over child custody. It's a bill by Representative Cuton. He's asked me to handle it here. It is non-controversial. Matters have been straightened what out. What was that sponsor's name? Representative Q. Barry. You know Barry. Is he the leader of the 
I'll ask him. The outfit has got us extended. Ah, now come on, Senator Barron. Let's let's go to the merits of this bill and pass it. He's been trying to pass the thing Brother for three Senator years. Senator Further yield. He yields. Senator, sit down. But no, I won't. Senator, sit down. Senator, you sit down. <laughs> Senator, I have been messing with your bills. This is not my bill. This is a bill that is, that is well, badly needed. Well, if you it's got to be bad. Were we on the order of House Messenger, Senator Yes. Trevor? We were not. Yes, I thought we were. Were we on the order of House Messenger? Yes, sir. I'm and not asking you, Senator Myers. Please cut his mic off for a minute. Secretary of the Senate, Joe Brown. Parliamentary, in Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. President. State inquiry. This bill has not gone to committee, point of order. I move that it go to committee, and if it doesn't, it takes a two-thirds vote. Mr. President, this thing passed, this bill passed the committee unanimously out of Judy Civil. This House bill, is it a House this bill? This House bill. Kooten's bill eventually passed that day, messages, but Mr. not without a fight. A fight that came for most bills that Dempsey Barron didn't like back in the days when Barron was king.